I have uh, the Canadian national news with me. Oh, hi. Hey, guys. Hi. They're, they're decriminalizing all hard drugs. Don't do it. Yeah, how come? What do you think? You tell me. It enforces, it, it, it encourages them to do more. Yeah, are you seeing that happen here? Seeing it. Yeah. It's exploded. Has it, eh? And it's gotten cheaper. Police see increased demand, increased supply. And Bayer says that could happen in British Columbia, too. And we talked to folks last week that say they're buying for a dollar a pill or they're trading aluminum cans, which you can, are worth 10 cents in Oregon. Aluminum we have a, cans. Um, so we, I had a guy last week be like, oh, yeah, like this, these guys that I buy my drugs from will take cans in exchange for drugs. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. That's okay. Things are gonna be okay. Well, this is what I keep talking about. This is when you decriminalize drugs. What's going to happen? It's going, it, you know, it's going to cause problems. One of the major things on there is recreational cannabis, you know, and the thing about it is, I said, it's not going to stop there. It's not going to stop there. Now you're seeing some states trying to push um, that they want to legalize mushrooms. They want to legalize these, these mushrooms. And the thing about it is that's a danger as well understand this and they said well it's it's natural it's from the ground yeah so is cocaine and many other drugs yeah there are synthetic drugs out there but there are also drugs that are manufactured from from plants from the ground understand that the the cannabis that was made many years ago is not the same cannabis today edibles it's not the same edible it's a much stronger content and you know many um Doctors have said this. They, you know, there have been people on the Joe Rogan show that have talked about this. And the thing about this, there are continuation to say, well, if we decriminalize drugs, it will reduce drug crimes. It'll reduce uh, drug addiction and stuff like that. Well, Oregon has found out the hard way that by decriminalizing drug possessions, it has increased the issues that are going on. And now the lawmakers are passing a bill to recriminalize drug possession. First on Fox tonight, this Oregon Senate has made a major decision on a controversial voter approved measure. They passed House Bill 4002, which will roll back a key component of Measure 110, making possessing a small amount of drugs illegal in Oregon once again. Now, the bill is headed to the governor's desk tonight. It passed 21 to 8 in a show of bipartisan support. Lawmakers in both parties say this is the best option to address the state's growing drug and addiction crises. House Bill 4002 will recriminalize possessing a small amount of drugs, reversing a key component of Measure 110. It also creates an unclassified misdemeanor for those found in possession of hard drugs, such as meth, heroin, and fentanyl. The bill will also give law enforcement the authority to decide whether to send someone into a deflection program, which connects the drug user to treatment, or to send them to jail for up to six months. Let's read this out of the AP. A bill recriminalizing the possession of small amounts of drugs was passed by the Oregon, the Oregon legislator, undoing a key part of the state's first in the nation D drug decriminalization law as the government struggles to respond to the deadliest overdose crisis in U.S. history. The Senate approved House Bill 4002 in a 21 to 8 vote after the House passed it on a 57 to 1 uh, vote. The bill now heads to the desk of Governor Tina Kotek who said in January she is open to signing a bill that will roll back decriminalization of drugs, Oregon's pub public broadcasting reported. With this bill, we are doubling down on our commitment to make sure Oregon's uh, have the access to treatment and care they need. And that's the first thing. They need treatment and care. 
said Democratic state majority leader Kate Lieber of Portland, one of the bill's authors, adding that its passage will be the start of a real and transformative change for our justice system. The measure makes the possession of small amount of drugs as heroin, methamphetamine, a misdemeanor punishable up to six months in jail. It enables the police to confiscate the drugs and crack down on their use on sidewalks in parks. Drug treatment is to be offered as an alternative to the criminal penalties. The bill is also to aim to make it easier to prosecute people who sell drugs, increasing access to addiction medication, and to obtain and keep housing without facing discrimination for using that medication. Decriminalization of personal use of amounts of drugs okayed by voters in 2020 under the ballot measure 110 was supposed to move hundreds of millions of dollars of marijuana tax revenue into drug treatment and harm reduction programs. That didn't translate into an improved care network for the state with the second highest rate of substance use disorder in the nation and ranked 50th for access to treatment according to an audit uh, report released in 2023. And this is the truth. Cannabis taxes will not solve the problems in each of these states. Look here in New York. We are, you know, we have a major problem. And the thing about it is, who's benefiting from this? Who is benefiting is the drug cartels and those in China. Because where is all this illegal stuff coming from? It's either coming across the border or it's being manufactured here illegally in the U.S. And with Oregon experiencing one of the nation's largest spikes in over, overdose deaths, Republican pre- pressure intensified and a well-funded campaign group called for a ballot measure that will further weaken Measure 110. Researchers have said it was too soon to determine whether the law contributed to the overdose surge and supporters of the decriminalization measures say that decades long approach of arresting people for possessing and using drugs didn't work. Lawmakers who opposed the bill voiced their concerns. Some call it returning to the war on drugs that disproportionately impacted and imprisoned millions of black men. I'm going to tell you one thing. If you're using drugs, dr- drugs are not race- racist. Anyone can use drugs. Yes, there are black men in jail for that because there is a there is a coalition that basically a lot of the drugs are funneled into minority communities. Understand that. Yes, in the... Um, white communities uh, are more richer. They do drugs as well, and they are arrested as well. But the thing about it is, a good chunk of it for many decades now has been funneled in the minority communities. But we are also now seeing it in all communities, especially with this fentanyl overdose situation. It has been affecting every man, woman, and child across our country. And that's what happens. If we don't stifle it in in the minority communities, it's going to affect everyone on the outside well. That's why, you know, when you you complain that the police are in the minority communities, uh, that's racist. No, that's where the crime is. That's where the drugs are. That's where the violence is. You know, you have to understand the cops are going to go where they need to go, where they need to do their job. Democratic Senator Lou Frederick of Portland, one of four black senators, said the bill had too many flaws and that the testimony in the bill heard again and again was that substance use disorder requires primary a medical response. I am concerned that the bill will attempt to use the same tactics of the past and failed only to reinforce the punishment narrative that it failed for 50 years, he said, adding that the measure could move more and more people into the court system without making them healthier. He's partially right and he's partially wrong. See, the thing about it is there are many ways that we can stop this, but we do not pull the trigger on those. There are drugs that are made naturally uh, that have been used overseas 
that have the ability to remove addiction. And the thing about it is, is that it's not legal in this country and no research is being done in this country on it. There are those in many medical universities that are willing to do take up the research on it, but they're not being approved by by the government. You know, this should tell you something. And the other half of this, the other half of this, and then they tell you, you know, what we need to do is to stop, you know, we need to stop you know, border crossings the way that we're doing. Yes, it, it, part of this is, is border crossings. Take a moment. Understand this. Take a moment. Check out, and in, in YouTube they have it. They have some of these videos out there from Australia and from England and from, that they show you people coming across into their countries and what they do passing through legal immigration. We're talking legal immigration. And what they bring with them. Whether it's through the airports or through the postal system. Look at the look at the drugs that are coming in. Stuff that's illegal that doesn't come in. And it comes in on a constant basis. And that's only in the legitimate part of the, on the, of the immigration. Imagine what is coming illegally across those borders. But people say, well, they're only coming with stuff on their back. But yes, but they can carry a small packet of drugs with them enough to kill thousands of people. Understand it? Fentanyl tablets alone, you can carry a bag in and that will feed, you know, thousands upon thousands of people and will kill thousands upon thousands of people. And this happens on a constant. And remember, drugs can be also brought in internally. There are people who, who have come around as what they call drug mules. That's still happening. That hasn't ended. You know, these are the things that have to be done first from a law, you know, law enforcement standards. You know, we have to shut all of this down. We need more law enforcement on our borders doing the job that they're supposed to do, stopping people coming across our borders. And it's the same thing in airports, in bus terminals, you know, when we look at this situation. Also in our postal system, you know, some of this stuff can be made come through our postal system. There, there are a lot of people that are good that hide these drugs very carefully inside books and shoes. And I mean, I saw one episode where they hit, hid it in, they hid heroin inside, you know, um, eyeliner, you know, those little eyeliner pens that they make. Yeah. They've hidden it inside the eyeliner pen itself. Part of it is working where they, you know, take the little thing out and, you know, you know, use the eyeliner on the other half of it is a small dose of heroin and it's all in one box and there's more than one. So you're carrying a good chunk of heroin into the country inside eyeliner pens. I mean, you know, those little eyeliner brushes, you know, I, I saw that the other day and it was like, oh my God, you know, this is the crazy things happen. People don't realize it occurs. On the other half, and this goes with the mental health issues, you need to get out there and help people that are having mental health issues and that, that are taking drugs on a constant basis. They need help. Look what's going on in, in, in Philadelphia. Look at all the people that they're on that trank drug. And this is starting to happen in cities like New York and Chicago, Seattle, you know, it's San Francisco. This is constantly happening. So tell me in the comments below, tell me your thoughts about this. What else more can we do to stop this? I mean, one of the things is stop recreational cannabis, stop all these laws that they want to legalize drugs on there. If you have a sign where it can be done medicinally, then let the research go forward. Pay for the research. And if not, don't legalize them. Don't. It's not going to help. We already seen this. We've seen this here in New York alone. Cannabis is rampant through New York, illegal, and it's allowing untaxed cigarettes, uh, you know, illegal edibles, illegal vape pens to be sold as well. Also, please take this moment, smash that subscription button. We do really appreciate that. Like and share this video. 
We will see you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to check out all of our videos here on Cutecast TV and Man Man with the Show. Until next time, thank you for tuning in. Bye bye now. Thanks for watching, commenting, and sharing this video. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe as this helps the reach of this channel. Finally, as a content viewer, you have the ability to help support this channel as new internet laws around the world will diminish our reach and affect our sponsors. If you choose to help, there are two ways listed in the description below. The first link will lead you to a pay site where you can make a monetary donation. The second will lead you to our gear shop where you can buy shirts, mugs, and other gear. Discounts will be listed on the site. Once again, thank you for watching and your support.